Alright, so in this video I want to go one step further than we have done in previous videos and that's actually talk about how to actually calculate the change in buffer pH when you add in some strong base, so either add in some OH- minus or some H+. Plus. Now this is a little bit more involved than what you've seen before. There are actually two pieces involved in every pH change in buffer calculation. The first piece is always called the stoichiometry problem. The second piece is always called the equilibrium um, problem. Well, the, equal ca the equilibrium calculation, the stoichiometry calculation. So the stoichiometry calculation, there's uh, Let's just go through with what's actually happening here. Let's say we have a buffer that looks like this. It's got some weak acid HA and it's got its conjugate base of whatever those concentrations are. The part of the stoichiometry calculation that we have to understand is what am I adding in? Alright, so let's just ask ourselves, what should we add in? Well let's let's add in some H plus. We're going to add in some strong acid to our buffer. And the first thing we always want to ask ourselves is uh, well, which of my two species in my buffer is that is that H plus going to react with? Well, of course, an acid is not going to react with an acid if there's a base present. So the acid reacts with the base. The strong acid reacts with the most basic species, which in this case is the base. And so we want to write out actually what we're doing here. So we have our H plus. Okay. We have our A minus. And that is going to form some neutral acid, HA, which of course is this. All right. And we have essentially uh, two columns here. We have before addition, that ADDN is just addition, and then we have after addition. All right. Now of course we have some numbers here, so uh, we would ordinarily have numbers here, so let me just throw some numbers out. Let's say for the buffer we had original concentrations of, I don't know, let's say 0.5 molar. And let's say here we had 0.4 molar, for example. All right. And we added in, I don't know, 0.01 molar of the H+. Plus, all right. So before addition, this means before addition of the H+. Plus, Actually, no. What I should say is, let me go go back a little bit there. Initially, when I throw everything in together, initially, uh, in fact, let me let me just change these just so we can make it a little bit clearer. All right. Let's say this is before reaction. This is after reaction. All right. It illustrates the same thing. So initially, what we have is 0 0.01. Um, moles per liter of our H plus. Let's just say that that's what we started with. Our A minus we had 0 0.40 moles per liter. Now our HA, which is what we're going to form here, which we're, we're going to form here, but we also have present, is 0.5. All right. Now of course the strong acid reacts with the weak base, and of course you can see there's a lot more of the acid, the, a lot more of the base than there is of the acid, so after the reaction's over, all my acid is used up, so I have none left. Okay. But if I use up all my acid, then I use up a similar amount of my base, so this should be, I go from, to go from 0 0.01 to 0, I subtract 0 0.01. And I'm doing the same thing here. So what I have left is 0 0.390. Now, if I lost 0 0.1 on this side, I actually gain it on the other side because these two combine to form my acid, or my HA. So what, what I end up with here is 0 0.51. 0 0.510. So these were the concentrations before, these were the concentrations after the initial stoichiometry reaction is done. So at this point we're completely done with the stoichiometry part and the numbers that we want to use are going to be outlined in this box.
contract. This one's not really an issue, it's these two that we're concerned about. And then for the equilibrium part, all we do is we just come up with the ice table same as we did before, except now we plug in the two values that we have. So we have, for our HA, we've got 0 0.510, of course for the water we're not doing anything. Again, for the equilibrium ice table, that is initially zero for the H3O plus, and from what we did before, for the acetate, in this case, it's 0 0.390. So then what we do what we do is just go through, solve everything, so that would be minus x plus x plus x, so we get x. This would be 0 0.390 plus x. This would be 0.510 minus x. So we come up with our equilibrium expression. Solve for x and uh, once we once we have x, of course x is what we need to calculate our pH. And what we find, at least in theory, is that the pH um, after we've added this OH minus would be, or after we've added the H plus, sorry, would be about the same as the pH of the buffer before. Not exactly the same, but close enough. Anyway, this is enough of me talking about what's actually happening. Why don't we go through an example so you can see exactly how we would do this. All right, let's move on to this situation. So we have an actual question here that you might see. One liter of a buffer solution contains 0.1 moles acetic acid. And that's the Ka of acetic acid and 0.1 moles of sodium acetate. Okay. Calculate the new pH after adding 0 0.01 moles of NaOH to the buffer. All right. So, we have uh, we we have a question where we're being asked to calculate a new pH. All right. You could also just be asked to calculate the pH change at the buffer. And the way you do that would be to take the new pH, subtract the old pH from it, and then just that would, that would be the pH change. But what you'd see is that the new pH, at least in theory, is very similar to the old pH. Anyway, this solution here I actually looked at in detail in a previous video. And what we found was that for a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid um, containing 0.1 molar of sodium acetate, so you've got that buffer there, the pH of that solution was 4.74. So that's the starting point, all right? That's our original pH, and we're going to see how our new pH compares to that. So remember um, the approach that we have here. We have the stoichiometry calculation first. So let's do that bit first. Let's do the stoichiometry part. S, stoichiometry. So we have our acetic acid, we have our sodium acetate. Of course, this is just Na plus C2H3O2 minus, in case anybody is wondering. So that C2H3O2 minus is exactly the same as that one. Calculate the new pH after adding NaOH, so after adding OH minus. So what that tells us is OH minus is going to react with one of the species in our buffer. And of course it's going to be the acetic acid. So let's write out that equation. HC2, H3O2, that is our uh, acetic acid. And added to that is our OH minus that's been added into the buffer. that going to make? Well, what it's going to make is C2H3O2 minus, this is essentially a neutralization reaction, and H2O. Sorry, that pH kind of got in the way there. Now, again, we're going to look at before, and we can actually probably add a change column as well. There's no, really, there's no real reason why we shouldn't do that. All right, so before, the concentration of our acetic acid, well actually we don't have a concentration, we're given a number of moles, but we're also given a volume. So 0.1 moles per liter, of course, means our concentration is 0.1 molar. 
the acetate notices exactly the same thing. Now, for the OH minus, that's 0 0.01 moles in one litre, so that is actually 0 0.01. Alright, notice the difference in factor of 10 there. Change. Well, which of these two is going to get used up? Well, of course, it's going to be this one. So all of that OH minus is going to get used up. Which means, because we have a 1 to 1 ratio here, 0 0.01 of those is going to get used up. And again, because of the 1 to 1 ratio, we're going to form 0 0.01 of our product. Obviously, we're not concerned about the water because that's no concentration there. So 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 is 0, as you would expect. All that strong base gets used up. 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 is, of course, 0 0.09. And then this guy is just going to be 0.11. OK, so as I said before, now we can just take our concentrations that we know we're going to be dealing with in the equilibrium part of the question. So we are, at this point, we are here. We've figured out the concentrations um, that we can now put into the equilibrium um, part of the question. All right, so let's move on to that. Equilibrium part of the question is this. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can just highlight this whole thing. Actually, just give me a minute. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, okay, I don't know how to do that. Never mind. Let's just write it out. Sorry for taking up time here. So, once we're done with that, we're going to go on to the equilibrium part, where we write out the equilibrium um, the equilibrium reaction that we're concerned about. Now, the pH, of course, comes from the H3O+. So the H3O+, comes from the most acidic species present, which is this. So the reaction that we're going to write out is that of the acetic acid reacting with water okay, to give our acetate and our H3O plus. Okay. So, ice table again, so we're going to go I, C, and E. Now let's fill in those values again. Okay, so the initial concentration of the acetic acid is what's present after that OH- minus has been added, which is this. So that is 0 0.09. Water, again, we're going to do without. The initial concentration of the acetate is what we got from up here, is 0 0.110. And initially, we didn't add any H3O+, so therefore that is 0. We're going to put in our X's like we did before. All right, and of course, because this cannot decrease below zero, that change is going to be positive, as is that, and that's going to be negative. So what we end up with for the equilibrium values, of course, are this, 0 0.09 minus x, 0 0.110 plus x, and then, of course, x for the H2O plus x, of course, being exactly what we're looking for to get the pH. All right. Now, let's write out our equilibrium expression. And we're going to equate that all to the Ka, because you remember that Ka is equal to the products over the reactant. So in this case, that is C2H3O2 minus times concentration of H3O plus, all divided by the concentration of the undissociated acid, which in this case is HC2. H3O2. Now the thing is, we can solve for we can solve for x here because we know Ka. We also know Ka is very very small. We're going to make our assumption again that because Ka is so small, uh, 0 0.09 minus x is essentially 0 0.09, and for the same reason, 0 0.110 plus x is essentially 0 0.110. So we know Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And then we also know, after we've done our um, simplification here, that we have 0 0.110 times 
x, which is the concentration of H3O plus, that x right there, divided by 0 0.090. And of course we can just rearrange our equation, take 0 0.09 over here, multiply it, take 0 0.110 over here and divide it, and we get a value for x. And what we actually get is 1.47 times 10 to the minus 5. So that is the concentration of our H3O plus, uh, in molarity, of course. And so in order to get the pH, all we've got to do is take the negative log of this, so we can say pH of our buffer after we've added the OH minus is equal to the negative log of 1.7, 1.47 times 10 to the negative 5, which in this case is 4.83. All right. Now, notice that what that means is the initial pH was 4.74. The pH, yes, it's gone up because we had a base, but it's gone up by a very, very small amount. If this was not a buffer, that pH would have shot up. All right. So, um, just to be absolutely sure, let's check that the approximation that we did was valid. The x here was 1.47 to the negative 5. We divide that by the initial concentration of 0 0.90. So 1.7 to the minus 5 divided by 0 0.90, all multiplied by 100 to get to 100% gives us a percent error of 0.016 percent. You can calculate that yourself and go and just check that. So we are well within our limits for doing the approximation that we did. Okay, okay, so that is that is the way to figure out the pH of a buffer after you've added in some, in this case, strong base. Uh, the question would be exactly the same if you'd use strong acid. The only difference would be you'd have H, this would be, you know, H plus here, and that would be reacting with the conjugate base rather than the acid. So this would be a little bit different. So with these numbers, and then you just plug them down into here, get your X, make this equivalent to your H3O plus concentration, do your negative log, and get your pH. So the pH change here would be just 4.83 minus 4.74, which is 0 0.09 pH units. All right. Okay, that is how to calculate pH change in a buffer after adding.